I like the broken color. I love to keep that broken color. And sometimes I'll accidentally overwork a piece and I'll have to go back, erase, and then do broken color. Just mindfully be carefully, uh, trying to be careful about trying, try to keep that broken color in there. You won't believe what we've been through. You're about to learn about it. <laughs> it's been a crazy morning, and we'll tell you about that in a couple of minutes. But our guest today <laughs> is the incredible pastelist, Brenda Boylan. Brenda, welcome. Welcome, Eric. Thank you so much. <laughs> we have had, we've had quite a time this morning. We have uh, been just un unable to get Brenda's camera and, and microphone to work. And it's been, we've been on back and forth. Allie called me, I was on the treadmill. Allie called me and said, come over and help. And we've been working on it. And then I ran out to quick shower, came back. You've been kind of trying, you ended up going downstairs to your neighbor's studio. You're in a studio oh. building. And, oh my God. Uh, Doing and jumping your friend jazz. Chaz was helping you with the camera work. Hi, Chaz. And uh, so here's what's going to happen. Brenda, tell <laughs> us what you're going to do today. Well, I'm going to be doing a uh, urban scene with pastel. I'm going to start at the beginning, and I'm going to try my best to whip right through it. It's a scene from San Francisco from the Plain Air Convention last year, or All is right. it? Yeah. So I want to Still do something year, urban. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that's going to be fun. So what's going to happen now, um, Brenda and Chaz are going to run upstairs, get <laughs> Brenda's easel and pastels which is a big job because there's a lot of stuff you got to carry they're going to uh -huh. bring it down to your neighbor's studio all the way downstairs she's going to be out of breath when she comes back on and <laughs> i'm going to stall by making announcements are you ready good morning everybody i hope you can hear me our connection is spotty um we didn't get a sound check last week, so we're up against the wall right now. And I hope you can follow along as best as possible well, with me. <laughs> if you can yeah. keep up with me. <laughs> you you sound great. And uh, I'm, I'm impressed that you even have a black background. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> hey, my studio uh, neighbor, Chaz Martin, I couldn't have done this without him. So he's a sculptor and he's, he's phenomenal. And right. uh, I got to give him a lot of credit, Eric. Okay. Well, maybe if we have a little time, we'll get to meet him and, and get to see a piece of his work or something. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll have his sculptures walk across the screen when we're Oh uh, yeah. Just an occasional uh, <laughs> infomercial. So Brenda and I, uh, Brenda was on, were you on our first or second trip to Cuba? I, I couldn't hear that last part, Eric. I'm sorry. Which trip to Cuba were you on? What am I going to do today? Well, that'll that what work. You're wanting to know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing a pastel scene from um, San Francisco when we were there for the plein air convention. And um, when I first arrived there, uh, I, I I got there a couple days early so I can explore the city. And I walked a good eight miles the first day uh, with my friend uh, Michael Orwick. And uh, he'll be, I think, in the planar convention, or he has a couple times with you. Um, anyway, he and I are good buddies, and we walked around. And I'm totally filling up my camera with imagery, and uh, it, it was an exciting trip, exciting city. And um, so anyway, I want to do a urban scene from that trip. And um, because I had to move my easel or my, my pop-up easel into Chaz's studio, I don't have my reference photo. So I do have a sketch, and um, I know what I want to do in my mind, and um, so hopefully we can go from there. Now, okay, hopefully I can good. hear you, Eric. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. Okay. All right. Um, where do I start? <laughs> um, anyway, here's my sketch, and that's a cable car. Actually, it's a trolley. In, uh, at the final stop of uh, in San Francisco over by the wharf. And the trolley was this muted green color. I'm going to change the trolley to be red um, because the background will probably be grays and, and blues and greens. 
and I want to uh, offset the trolley as being more uh, the focal point. So also, I also uh, put the trolley in an area, you know, if you do like a tic-tac-toe on your, on your uh, scene, on your panel, then you put your focal point in one of the four crosshairs. So that's what I did with my trolley. It's hard, hard doing this backwards. And I'm going to stick this next to my piece, hopefully here. And um, so what I did is I started out, let's see, can you see this? Does it need me closer? All right. Hopefully. Can you hear that? See that? Yep. A little bit closer. Okay. Zoom in a little bit more. All right. So um, what I love to do is start out thin to thick or start out with a thin um, marking of pastel. And I'm working on a sanded paper that's mounted. And the sanded paper is made by UART. It's a, I love a coarse grade 320 to 400, maybe not 400, but mostly 320. And I know that Bill Cohn and Kim and all the other pastels that you've shared online like different, different types of uh, substrates. I like the chewy kind. I like, I like the coarseness of it. I love how the underneath colors, how the underpainting pokes through and peeks through and makes um, the ultimate color um, vibrate or mixes with the eye. So that's kind of where I come from with my work is I like these layers, thin, transparent layers of pastel. Um, and then I build it up and add the, the uh, harder, heavier marks. So that's where the excitement comes in is towards the end, of course. So uh, what I've done here is I've put just a sketch in and I'm going to start out with, let's see. I think I have most of my colors down here. Let's see. And I use the side of my pastel like a paintbrush, like a flat brush. And I just apply it in there very softly. And Can I'm we zoom to... in a little closer to the canvas? Can we? Okay. Let's get... How's that? Close. Yeah, it's, or we can't see part of it. Yeah, that's better. A little closer okay. wouldn't hurt. Okay. This table won't move. There's no room between the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. That works. We're going to have to wing it, Eric, because that's, that's how we're flying today. Okay. All right. So I have a little spray bottle. Uh, you can use an old hairspray bottle or a mister. And I, and I fill it with a denatured alcohol. And I use alcohol when I'm plain air painting for pastels because the alcohol dries really quickly. So I'm going to spray this thin layer of pastel onto the sanded paper. And hopefully it'll spray correctly. It's not spraying correctly. It's dripping. Everything about today is going to be an experiment, obviously. Okay. So what I, I was trying to do here was put yellow into the sky because I want it to be a, a beautiful sunlit sky. And so I'm going to use a foam brush to blend that underpainting into the sky portion. And I'm starting with the lighter values first. And I get that down in there. Okay, and then I'm going to go to, I put red into the area where the trees will be because I want the red to show and neutralize the green of the trees, which it'll be in the end. So you're kind of like planning this stuff out long before you hit the easel. If you plan, then you succeed. If you don't plan, then it just kind of falls apart. Any questions yet? 
You're doing a great job. I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you now. All right. So far, so good. Is this, what kind of pastel is this? Soft pastel? Yes, it's soft pastel. And um, soft pastel is made from um, pure pigment. And it's bound with gum tragacanth. And pastels are extremely um, pigment loaded. Uh, like oil or acrylic or watercolor, there's a binder in them. But in pastel, we use just a, or pastels have very minimal binder. So it's pure pigment. And um, the more gum tragacanth that you put into your um, pastel pigment, then the harder the pastel will be. So for sketching, you can use uh, the harder pastels. And then as you go on further into the piece, you use the softer ones. For me, I use soft all the way. Um, every artist has their, their unique way of creating. It's kind of like having your own signature. You learn how to write, you learn how to cursive, and then it becomes your own style. So that's what happens with art and that's what I love about um, discovering pastels is that it's, you know, as you can tell, my work kind of goes all over the place with it, but you can tell the signature excitement in my work. Anyway. Um, well, I'm curious why you keep a color wheel right there. Um, you've obviously been painting a long time. You already know the color wheel. Is this something that you refer to a lot? Um, yes, Eric. I'm glad you asked. So this color wheel, what I do before I even start out with my work is I do a, um, I do, I, I, I love to, I love color theory and I'm not a theorist at all, but what I love to do is try to decide before I even start kicking into the painting, what are my strongest colors in the painting? And I typically, I don't know why, but I love to have a complementary color scheme. And this is a, a split complementary with the green blue and the blue across from red orange. And I wanna pick one of those to be the dominant color. We'll see if that happens today. <laughs> but anyway, so what I did is I selected that color wheel and then I went and I looked in my, my pastel set and I did kind of a little selection of colors that I'd love to have in my painting. And these are the dominant colors that'll be the, the, the base for the painting. And right. then of course, there'll be other colors that I add along the way. Like of course, a red light or a green light that will be in the scene or uh, something else. So that's, that's the story behind that. I love to do that. It, it kind of sets the stage for my work. And uh, other times it, other times I just kind of go off the stage and I just do what I want. All right. So um, here we go. I need to add a little more alcohol for this. We'll get that off. I'm, I'm milking my, uh, I knew that was going to happen. Oh yeah. Hmm? Well, if you knew it was going to happen, why'd you do it? <laughs> well, it's because I don't have all my tools in front of me, Eric. Ah, yes. Like paper towel, for instance. Y yeah. Yeah. So we're doing the best we can here today. In case you just tuned in, Brenda had to move to a studio downstairs at a neighbor's to be able to get the internet to work. So she's she's a good sport. She brought everything that she could downstairs. Yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> well, no fault. To uh, well, me. I was telling people that we had a story when you and I went to Cuba uh, oh God. right before we uh, the night before. Tell them what happened. Oh, gosh. The night before, uh, we're flying out to um, Miami from Portland, and my husband and I had spent the night at the airport so we could just get up and get, on, get going. And um, I had put my insulin in the refrigerator at the airport hotel, 
and we left without my insulin. And as we're on the tarmac in Houston, I started freaking out because I forgot my insulin. So as soon as we uh, landed in Miami, we were on, a, on an emergency hunt for insulin because I am type 1 diabetic. And that would have been surely a mystery to handle Cuban insulin uh, for me. So it was, it was interesting. But you know what? There was no drama, right, Eric? No, no. We drove you all around Miami until we found something at, at like nine o'clock at night, right? Yeah, I was exhausted by the time I got to Cuba because of the stress from all of that. I, I swear, I, it's like I plan so much in advance for everything that I have to do. And um, there's always something. It seems that for the most part, like today, this is nothing, Eric. <laughs> Well, you handled the so, stress beautifully. I, oh, thank you. I, you know what? Life is too short to be miserable, right? Yeah. So you've got a great attitude. So what you're laying down um, uh, pastel on top of the yellow, which obviously must have dried already. It did. So the alcohol allowed um, uh, uh, melted the pastel under pastel that I put on the pastel glaze. And um, the alcohol dried it up. It mounted it or sealed it into the um, sanded paper. And so now I'm laying down in a really light layer of um, blue pastel, my the color that I want for the sky. And I'm allowing the yellow to peek through, which will kind of gives it a green hint. But yeah. it also gives it this sense of light. Yeah. And so... So it, it sparkles and I'm not laying that pastel in really heavy. Like I said, I do, I lay things in like a feather, um, yeah. just lightly, lightly touching. And then as I go on, it gets, it gets heavier. So I, I pretty much filled in the, the area there of the sky. And let's see here, here's my sketch. So I need to get the background, um, trees in or the background area there's I don't have my reference photos so I'm just gonna do this um, <laughs> as we go <laughs> that's okay that's, and, fun. Uh, you, you, that's fun and so you're you're doing the same thing laying color over color yeah yeah so I've got this beautiful oh my god I love this color for urban scenes it's a um it's a gray blue and it just says everything metal and steel. It's, I just absolutely love this gray blue Who color. Who makes it? Um, this one's a, it's a Jack Richardson color. I have my own pastel set, by the way. Oh, that's right. Um, you do. Yeah. I about that. Yeah. So, so Jack Richardson, they have, I've got uh, two sets. I've got one for Northwest pastel plein air. And then I have one for a starter kit. And yeah, we find yeah. those on, on your website? Yeah, you can find them on my website, uh, which is brendaboylan.com. And um, we have it on the screen. Find all the, yeah, so there is, there is where um, I have my, my pastel set. So thank you for allowing me to say that, Eric. There's a lot of competition out there. Uh, we're all in the same so, family together. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I even put it. my competitors on the air. I don't care. Oh, I have, wow. I have a, I have a, a sense of abundance. There's plenty for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And not everything is meant for everybody. Anyway, we're all individuals, so we have our own preferences, right? That's right. Uh huh. Yeah. So, okay. So let's see here. So you've really made those vehicles stand out. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just kind of like glaze in a couple of shapes in here. And I'm going to put in now that, okay. So the background is dark, but um, 
I'm going to put some of the sky color over these distant hills here with this blue, and this is where the layering fun starts to happen. So the sky influences and the atmosphere is in between those trees in the distance and, um, and where the viewer is. So I'm trying to get this in nicely. So anyway, the sky color goes over that beautiful gray that I put in for the, for the distant hill. And then I'm going to do that a little bit more with a gray over the green trees that are in the distance here. So it has that sense of atmosphere on them as well. And maybe even on this building, just a hint. Yeah, that looks decent. Okay. And then I have... Yeah, it's very forgiving medium. Now I'm using the end, the end edges of my pastel. And you can kind of do that. We can do some sketching. Uh, I'm just doing some scribbles. This is the highlight where the sun's hitting the top. And you can also use your finger to blend a little bit. What kind of paper is that? Did you, is that a sandpaper? Yes, it's a sanded paper. It's made by UART. And uh, UART is, it's so versatile because you can do a wash over it. It handles liquids, an oil wash or liquid, it holds it. And I mount it um, to a board. Well, that looks like a mess. Ah, that's okay though, right? Yep. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to Somebody said your pastels are on sale right now. You must have a Christmas special. They are. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And um, I've gotten a lot of great feedback from my students in the past. They say that they absolutely love them. So um, no kidding you. I, I also love Terry Ludwig pastels as well. So uh -huh. um, these are comparable to Terry Ludwig and, um, and uh, he's a fabulous uh, supporter and uh, manufacturer of pastels too so we all kind of have our faves that's good okay all right and ooh, i think i'll use my left hand oh my god let's see let's get some well I'm you got a shadow in... In. you get a shadow in there and we can't see what's going okay. on there we go how's that a little bit better that's better yeah uh huh okay so i'm putting in some tree trunks I hope this is turning <laughs> So it's uh, Judson's Art Supply. Art, Judson'sArt.com has a, a uh, 80 piece starter set with your name on it that they're, somebody just put the link in there. Oh, thank you so much. Love you for doing that. So in this area here, in the original image, there were people walking um, on the sidewalk here. So I have to remember, I, I'm going to have to dust that off. So if you have an area that you've put pastel on and you want to remove it, you can take your foam brush, your dry one. Is that just one of the foam brushes that you'd pick up at a paint store? Yep, yep, 50 cents. I'm going to use my apron foam. because my – pardon? Just a just foam, just a rubber foam. Yeah, yeah, the cheapy, they're cheapy. Um, you can see this one's kind of chewed up. <laughs> yeah. But um, you can you can erase with just a tiny little corners of it, and remove some pigment with just that, or you can remove it, you know, the whole side. And then of course they wear away, they they break up, and you just get another one. Love them. Awesome. Now I'm going to soften this highlight where the where the highlight of the sun is hitting the tops of the trees. I'm going to soften those with my finger so that they look more uh, farther in the distance. Everything in the distance should be blurrier, and my focal point, of course, will be the uh, trolley. Um, okay, now I'm going to put in the street color. 
I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to start out with just a little bit of pink because I want it to be uh, like a pinkish gray. And I'm going to hopefully make that happen here. Um, so I'm going to do that with blending uh, lightly with, not with my finger though. I'm going to just have to use the pastel to do the blending. And my style tends to be, um, it, it, I like the broken color. I love to keep that broken color. And sometimes I'll accidentally overwork a piece and I'll have to go back, erase, and then do broken color. Just mindfully be carefully, uh, trying to be careful about trying, try to keep that broken color in there. Now this is the sidewalk here. Now I'm going to use an orange, a pale orange, on top of that concrete. Now this concrete in San Francisco is old stuff. And it was, uh, in California, they have a lot of concrete um, roads instead of asphalt. For some reason, um, they have concrete instead, which is gives it a whole different kind of um, yeah, it's something to do with earthquakes. I don't know. <laughs> oh boy, I grew up in California, so I know what that's all about. Okay, here's a tool that I use when I'm plein air painting. I get one of these little plastic T squares. And they're lightweight and I put it on the top of this so I can get my angles correct and see how that runs sometimes sometimes you don't really have to worry too much about the angle of anything but for the street street poles I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in well, and if you're putting something in a frame, if it's not straight, it's going to stand out. Yeah, but it also, if your style is to be a little lopsided, <laughs> like I said, I tend to be, <laughs> I let things just happen. It just depends on where I'm at with my work um, and um, where I'm at physically, the energy. As you can see, this just looks so unfinished right here, but... Um, I'm going to try and get this in just to give that. You have to line that up. And actually, I think these poles were a little uneven. Let's see here. Also, too, if you don't have a T-square, I take my pinky and I put it against the edge of the painting. And I just line this, ah, I line it straight down like that. And that really uh, solves the T-square issue. I'm going to thicken this up a little bit. You getting any questions out there, Eric? I'll check one more, one more time here. When you're finished with your painting, do you have to do anything to preserve it before framing it? Yes, and I'll show you. Um, use a product called Glassine. Glassine. And um, yeah, it's it's like a tracing paper, but it doesn't have a tooth. And I uh, usually roll this up in my backpack if I'm plein air painting, and I'll put it all on top of it, and I'll rub my hand on the glassine over the pastel painting and that knits the pigment into the tooth of the paper huh. and then of course you frame it with um with glazing the unfortunate part about uh, pastels is that you have to have it protected there's there's no other way to do it um if it gets exposed to the to um you know, to someone touching it, then you're, it's a mess. I was talking to a friend yesterday who uh, owns two John Singer Sargent paintings. 
And he, Woo! we were talking because he was asking my advice on what to do because some kid visiting his house poked one of them with his fingers and left indentations on it. Oh, oh, that's awful. You thankfully, tell it, thankfully, it's just a matter of spraying the back with a water bottle to make the dimples go out, I think. But oh, got to yeah, do it with a proper right. restorer when you're talking about a million dollar painting. Yeah, boy, that's I bet he's not going to be invited back to his house. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen. When Johnny came over? I'm sorry. <laughs> remember when Johnny came over and touched the sorry? Oh, yeah. I have one of those memories in my own house. I had a very rare antique radio because I used to collect them. And my cousin's kids were staying with us for about six months. And one of them, you know, not knowing, I mean, they were little, they just put his finger right through the speaker. It took its value from oh. high to low very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would be horrible, Eric. That wasn't horrible. How Nothing is horrible. What? How am I doing on time? You are at about, you got about, I'd say about 12 minutes. Okay, good. Yeah. We're doing all right. You're doing great. Good. So what are you doing now? Now, like I said, I'm doing this from memory. I know. I didn't do a, 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 a tester before going on screen. I just said, um, I've done this kind of stuff before. I looked at it quite a bit and um, I sketched it out, like I said. Oh, that was a little bit wobbly looking there. So, who's, uh, who's left any messages on there? Any comments? Uh, you don't really want to know them. I, I'm trying to protect your your self esteem. I can't possibly read them. Joking. I'm joking. Um, yeah. Hi from Italy, from Aliso. Um, what do you use for glazing over pastel? You just glass? Is it non glare glass? I'm. Yeah, clear glass. I use a. I love to use a. a, a an archival um, uh, museum glass, or uh, there's another product. Oh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. Yeah, do, you um, use a, do you use a fixative when you um, are done with the painting? No, i i don't I don't like fixatives because for me they they uh, lose it, it may help your pastel loses its glisten. And that, you know, that's, it, that's just like the beautiful part of pastel is that, is that glisten. And what it does is it just melts it. Um, the fix melts it. But, you know, some artists, they prefer it. And some artists don't. I don't. I don't, I don't like the fix. Yeah, um, so it would be similar to when you spray the alcohol on, on the yellow. It kind of puts it into the pores of the, of the paper. Yes. Exactly. And um, that's not that's not like a real good thing. You don't want really want that to happen um, with your with your um, pastels because they just they, I mean, who's the who's the I'm I'm failing on my words right now. The artist who um, ugh, help me here, Eric. I don't know um, what you're talking about. I'd help you if I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> the artist, um, uh, God, I'm, I'm totally blanking on him. Anyway, they didn't have fix back then. So, oh, you're talking um, about a historic well, artist, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. So I'm trying to put that shine down, that sheen down on this. Anyway, my friend so Chad. You kind of create. You cre talk, talk about how do you create that glow on the corner? How, exactly, what do you do there? Well, I'm taking my lighter pas a lighter pastel, and I started out with the orange, which is closer to the red, and yet it's getting hit by the light above uh, from the sunlight, 
And so I glazed that on top of the red and then I'm using the yellow and then where the highlight is going to be, I am going to put yellow there, right here. So lay the light on last, light, the lighter color on last. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to do light underneath dark. You want to have dark down first like you do in oil painting. So I got to get some of these other colors in here real quick. Um, because I know we're probably getting close to the eight minutes. End. You got eight minutes. Ah, okay. Ah. Well, you know, when you're doing this kind of on the fly, Eric, <laughs> as you know, we started out. Um, well, nobody you, gets a painting done in this amount of time, typically. Oh, well, okay. So don't feel any also, pressure. Also, something that I love. I love to use, um, sometimes I love to use odd colors. As long as the value is correct, then the painting will still read. So that's always somebody. Uh, somebody said an artist told her that hairspray works as a fixative. She hasn't tried it yet. It does. Yeah, hairspray. Hairspray, hairspray works as a fix. I'm putting the back window in a little bit here. And then I remember yeah, I this remember the 80s. Had... I remember the 80s using hairspray. I can't even imagine doing it now. Don't want that in my room. Doing... Back, back when in you the were staying alive. Back in my disco, <laughs> I had a I had a uh, a white double knit suit, platform shoes, shiny shirt. Do you remember the print pattern on your shiny shirt was it solid or did it have a have you know it had it was uh it. it was a brown shirt with eagles on it and i had puka <laughs> shells oh my god you had some of those too yeah that, that yeah. was the that was the I thing puka that was shells. my that was my stage outfit because i had to go on stage at rock concerts and introduce bands <laughs> really yeah I'll have to drum up one of those pictures. Oh my gosh. That that would be actually quite funny to see. So Gabrielle just... says I use fix on the beginning of the painting, but not on the final. That way she can get the to... the lights in so that they uh Let's see here. It says, but not on the end when the brightest, well, the comments keep moving. When the brightest lights get to put us put on as the lights will meld into the dark. So also fix under will bring back some tooth if you need it. That's interesting. Ah, Thank you, very good. Yeah. Thanks for the, all here thanks to help for the tips other. on those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't have my, um, my pastel pencil set here with me because we moved studios. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to let's see here. I know that this has the trolley has this thing right here, and it connects. Uh, it's amazing you're uh, doing this from from no reference photo. Well, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm gonna have that line fade away. Oh, you have your draw. You have a drawing there. I see that. Yeah, so that helps. Yeah, yeah. My sketch, my sketch helps. Um, you want that line to fade away so you don't take them off the edge of the painting. I'm getting very close to being done here. Although this is very rudimentary. I mean, it's 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 still very choppy looking, but for the most part, it has the bones of it. And uh, let me get some sunshine on the on this as well. Gloria is asking, "What other surfaces you use? Is you art the Say only?" Say that surface? one more time, Eric. What other surfaces do you use? 
I couldn't hear what you said. What other surfaces do you use? Oh, well, she's not hearing me. I tried. Okay, say it again. What other surfaces do you use? Oh, okay, I heard you. Um, I, I'm, I will prep my own surfaces. Uh, one time I was in a plein air event and I had a piece that really, it, it was failing. So I had to find uh, another panel and um, I went to the art store, got a oil painting panel, just a panel panel, not a canvas panel. And I applied this grit gesso and then I added pigment to the gesso as well. And that, it gives you a really beautiful brushy uh, quality, but it's very coarse. And, but the beautiful thing about it is that it looks like, um, it looks like an oil painting, it, you know, with all the brushwork and everything. So, have you tried the uh, anyway, lore? Done... Yes, I have. <laughs> when I was first starting out, I tried velour, and um, that was great. That's good for flowers and um, other things. Uh, portraiture sometimes. Um, yeah, I've done that. Well, we're going to wrap up in two minutes. Okay. No pressure. It's looking good, though. Amazing what you pulled off here. <laughs> I don't know, Eric. You know, uh, going into this, I was, like, nervous the week prior. But when I woke up today, I was I was doing all right. I'd already psyched, uh, unpsyched myself out. So, you know, being <laughs> live on this stuff, it's not easy. Well, there's no reason it. to be nervous. There's only, you know, by the end of the day, only 10, 12,000 people watching. It's not like, it's not <laughs> like there's a million. Oh, well, gosh. I'm just so glad you guys are all watching out there, out in inter la internet land. Internet land. Yeah, internet land. Online land, whatever you call it. Very, I'm very loose with all of this. It's looking As great. You can tell. Okay. Well, why don't you come back on camera and we'll say a quick goodbye. Goodbye. You did a, ter <laughs> you did a terrific job there. How about applause? Thanks, Thumbs up and applause for Brenda okay. Boylan. Brenda, your Thanks, website Eric. is brendaboylan.com. And we can get your, uh, your pastels there or from various art suppliers that sell Jack Richardson uh, pastels, right? I think, um, who was it just put something in there about, uh, one of the suppliers. I can't remember which one it was anyway. Yeah. Jack uh, Richardson and, uh, no, uh, not Jack Richardson. That's the, that's the vend that's the manufacturer, but, um, Judson's and I think it's, Ooh, I can't remember. Yeah. Sorry. But Judson's, um, Judson's anyway, art supply. Also, who, Yes, thank you, thank you. And there's two links on my website in the shop on the shop link. And also, too, I want to mention that I have a couple galleries that represent my work: the Mission Gallery in Utah and our Elements Gallery in Newburgh, Oregon. So, please uh, go out and buy art. <laughs> buy art. Yes, we all we all need to sell art right now, don't we? Yes, we do. And actually, it's like buying your favorite friend, and they're with no back. There, it's great to have real work in your home. There's a, it brings a sense of peace in your home. If That's you ever have a, your own original art, you know 